Mm, I've purposefully set this camera up so I have to have good posture to like be seen nicely in the frame. But like that also means I have to have good posture, which is a downside. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're a new viewer. Today I'm going to be talking about what exactly is insulin, some of the main treatment options for type 1 diabetes but focusing on injections and pump therapy. So without further ado let's get on with the video and hopefully it'll be a short one because hopefully I won't ramble as much because I have notes. But then again that does not stop me. So what is insulin? So insulin is a hormone that is produced by the beta cells or beta cells in your pancreas. So essentially what insulin does is it helps to break down the proteins, carbohydrates, fats in your food in order to transport it to your different organs in order to provide them energy in which to work. At least that was my understanding of it. And when there is a lack of insulin, the body can't do that itself. So after you eat, your blood sugar rises. Everyone's blood sugar rises. That's just what your body does. Um, but in a non-diabetic's body, generally there is a signal sent to your pancreas which then releases insulin in order to break down the food, the glucose in the food you've just eaten, uh, breaks down the carbohydrates and all into glucose to then send off to different areas of your body to use as energy. However, in a type 1 diabetic's body, we don't produce insulin, or at least there is too little insulin being produced in order to break down in, to break down the food into energy. So seeing as the glucose cannot be broken down into energy, the glucose stays in your blood and then rises your blood sugar. And with no way to get it down, you get into something called diabetic ketoacidosis. I will get a bit further into that in maybe another video, but that is generally what insulin is. So what do you do when you don't have insulin? So type 1 diabetics and more increasingly some type 2 diabetics inject a manufactured version of insulin into their bodies in order to regulate their blood sugars. For years the common way was to inject animal insulin, more specifically pig insulin because I think that was the closest to um, human insulin that there was. However, nowadays a lot of insulins are actually manufactured human insulin, which feels better because it seems weird injecting like animal insulin into your body for some reason. Plus, can you imagine being vegan and being told that the life-saving hormone, the like the life-saving drug that you are on is derived from an animal? So seeing as a diabetic's pancreas has gone into early retirement, we have to be our own manual pancreas. 24 hours a day, every single day, we make hundreds of decisions just in order to think like a pancreas. So the main two big types of insulin treatment are injections or multiple daily injections which is commonly referred to as MDI or there is insulin pump therapy which is this small wee box thing um, that I used to be on but there is also something um, called inhaled insulin that I read about um, it kind of works like an asthma inhaler and it is used kind of at meal times to lower spikes in blood sugar after eating. But it is a less common form and it's not mainly used as a type 1 diabetic treatment. So I'm going to generally talk about MDI and pumps. 
So the thing is, they both use insulin. Um, they are both used in conjunction with carb counting and different ratios, time of days, and different basal programs. Um, the pump uses one insulin, while MDI usually uses two. Pump and injection sites are generally on the stomach, the thighs, and generally anywhere there is fat, you can put a pump site. Like, but you can also put it on your arm or something. It just depends where you feel most comfortable. Uh, you can inject or put a pump site in any area as long as there's enough kind of fat there to have a needle put into it. So the most important thing to realise first of all is that there is no one size fits all approach to treating diabetes. There's literally not like some people prefer to be on insulin pens, some people prefer to be on a pump and everyone's uh, carb ratios are different, everyone's insulin sensitivity factor is different um, and that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't realise is that just because you know one diabetic that just means you know one diabetic. That you know their treatment but you don't know everyone else's treatment because everyone is different. So with insulin injections or MDI you have two injections as such. You have your main bolus insulin which is what you take at meal times, um, so and what you take your correction dose, so that's your rapid acting insulin, and you also have your basal or your background insulin. This is my fast acting um, daily insulin, so it's just in that wee tube. I'll do a zoom up in a wee second, should be like around here. So this is my injection pen. Um, it's carried with me constantly in this wee thing. So if anyone's ever seen this bag, it holds my pancreas. If it ever goes missing, please return to me because um, I need this. And it, I generally hold like my meter and spare needles and like spare insulin in here and everything. So if I ever lose it, much appreciated, give it back. Um, so the short acting insulin I'm on is called Nova Rapid and this is my bolus insulin, it's my background and it is called Traceba. The main difference, well the difference between bolus and basal insulin is a basal or background insulin is released over 24 plus hours and like it just, just depends of the different profiles of the hormones that it's been manufactured with like some of them hit a peak earlier some of them are a bit more like steady with their release for example I think Levomir had a slight peak time which means at that time where your peak hit you have to be kind of careful about what you're eating because injecting on top of that peak would drop you low um, so you have different types of pens. So this Traceba pen is a um, single use pen and by that I mean once I use up all of the insulin in this um, chamber I then dispose of the needle and dispose of the pen in a medically safe bin to be then taken down to the chemist and burnt. Um, however this pen, my fast acting, um, I this is a refillable pen. Um, I'm going to move here because I'm going to show you how I change it. But this is a refillable pen, which means that when I'm done, I just unscrew this pen. I slide in a new cartridge, slide in a new needle, and I continue to use this specific pen. So, are we with me so far? If not drop me a question below. So there are different, um, there are many different types of insulin as I have mentioned. So the main are short and long acting which is our like rapid acting on our background basal but within that there's different brands. 
kind of think of it as shoe brands. They're all shoes, but there's different brands within that. So for long acting, there is Levemir, Lantus, Traceba, Novolog, or like Novamix. And for like short acting, there is Nova Rapid, Fias. There's probably more, I just can't remember. So some pens um, offer half doses of insulin. Um, my long acting only has um, by one, so you dial it up and it goes up one unit. But my because I take more precise doses with my short acting insulin, it goes up by 0.5 of a unit every time I click my pen. So each of those clicks is 0.5 of a unit. So what are the pros and cons of using pens? So and I'm going to preface this by saying I'm just drawing on my like own experience and stuff because I've been on both MDI and a insulin bump. So any pros and cons mentioned in this are things I've experienced or things I've read about and agreed with. So my opinion is biased to what I know, uh, but also don't make any medical decisions on my videos. If you want to try something or other, consult your medical team first because I am not a registered or trained doctor or medical health professional. So some of the pros for me was that it's easier to inject in a formal dress than it is to like whip a pump out and try and like a dose adjust um, simply because you can just pull up your dress and inject into your thigh when you're using pens but because like there's a lack of place to put your pump in a dress it was significantly harder to give myself an inch and dose because I'd like clip it to like a waistband of shorts I was wearing underneath my dress it wasn't really good taste to like hike up your dress to get to your pump so that's what I did or because my pump was mainly clipped to the front of my bra wasn't really appropriate to like fish my hand down there in the middle of a formal so you disappeared to the toilet a lot there is a lot of like freedom of movement and a lack of things attached to you because you can just you just carry around your injection pens with you in a bag, throw them in a bag, whip it out and inject and go. Um, it's a bit more discreet than a pump because it's not constantly attached to you. Um, I find them easier, but that's just personal preference and they're funky pens and I get to carry them in a funky case. Um, but like kind of negatives are. So negatives are that you have to pre-plan for exercise and snack before exercise, which you have to do with a pump, but it's a bit easier on a pump because you can just reduce your basal on a pump and because you're on one inch with the pump, it will just kind of give you less insulin over your exercise period. However, with insulin pens, when you've injected your basal insulin, you can't take any of that away it's releasing through your system no matter what you uh no matter if you want it to or not because it's been injected so you kind of have to plan it out a bit more carefully but if you ge have a general idea of when you're exercising you just take less insulin at your meal time before you exercise or you just eat a snack before you exercise so some of these negatives are just things that I've like some of these negatives are things that like could be off-putting but are fixable um, you've got to have a place that's kind of easily injectable because you're not meant to inject through clothing or tights or anything because uh, if you inject through tights you could accidentally bring some of the tight the clothing fiber in under your skin when you uh, puncture it with a needle so if you get some skirt fib skirt or tight fiber stuck underneath your skin that's not going to be fun uh, it is easy to forget that you have injected so 
part of the reason I have this funky pen was because on the back it has a dose reminder so when you click it it pops up um, how many hours ago you took your last injection the battery is now ran out on that because I've had these pens for donkey's years but that was really handy to remind me when I had injected and if I needed to again so with um, insulin injections there is a risk of stacking your doses uh, because you can just inject any time which means that every time you inject an insulin so inject for a meal inject for like dessert or something then you inject correction dose more food you're snacking all these doses stack and then crash your blood sugars later on uh, which is quite dangerous so that is a big risk to look out for but can be managed uh, if you know what to look out for but next up insulin pumps so again there are many different types of insulin pump so you have your standard wired pump so you have your standard um, tubed pump which you connect with these bad boys this is a cannula and an infusion set and you will be given one insulin to act as your background and your fast acting insulin. So this is Humalog. This is what I was on when I was on the pump. So it comes in this nifty wee vial. And what you would do is you take this infusion set, you draw it up, push out the air bubbles, stick the top of it onto the pen, uh, stick the top of this into the vial, tip the vial and slowly pull back the plunger until the reservoir was full and didn't have any air bubbles in it because air bubbles are not good. Air bubbles means there is not insulin there and if there's an air bubble in your cannula your pump beeps at you and makes a lot of noise because there is an obstruction. Sometimes your pump beeps at you anyway even if there is no obstruction because it's having a bad day. And this is your cannula site. So, so what you do is you kind of attach this end that's like shaking about in there. Uh, you attach to the end of your reservoir, which is that wee thing and other thing here. Um, and then you would peel off all of this. You would um, unwind all the cannula, pull back the back of this once you've peeled it off and then you put it against your skin wherever you're putting it in so like your arm or your stomach and you press these two dimples on the side and fire the needle into your skin pull it out and the cannula is left in under your skin to deliver the insulin over the next like three days I say three days some people take more insulin so they will be going through it a bit faster but with a pump you have to change your cannula site every three days because that is the limit before it is medically unsafe so no matter how much insulin you've got left in that reservoir after three days you have to change it because I think something in the plastic or something um, degrades uh, after a certain amount of time so in order to keep safe change it after three days so a pump is generally seen as like the gold standard of care because it acts closer to a pancreas than MDI does because it kind of it releases a background insulin without you constantly having to do it manually um, you just have to press a few buttons when you want to give yourself insulin for a meal and then it's delivered. You can use different functions such as a dual wave, a square wave. You can give like 30% of your insulin up front and then release the rest of it over like a couple of hours. The pump is great. I'm not denying that the pump is a great piece of equipment. I'm not going to bash the pump because it is great and people do want to go on to it and I can see why and 
people deserve the choice to choose whether they want to win the bump or not just as they deserve the choice to choose whether they want to come off it or not. Um, so with a pump you have to, at least on the NHS, you have to meet a certain level of criteria to be able to get the pump in the first place. For example, um, you need to lose your hypo awareness, so you get hypo unawareness, um, like hypo anxiety, you could be like hospitalized, you could be very have very uncontrolled diabetes. There but there is a lot of guidelines that you have to meet to get the pump. So as I said, a pump can deliver your bolus over a long period of time. Um, it's one insulin, so you don't have to worry about multiple insulins. You only have to change the pump site every three days, which means less stabby things. It is, as I said, it's more flexible in terms of exercise because you can reduce your basal or like completely take off your basal or disconnect your pump if needed. Um, you can have different basal rates and basal programs at different parts of the day. Um, and you can program different basal rates for things like periods and um, exam stress, whatever you name it you can probably change your basal program to suit and put like temporary basals on for that. For example, for work I would put on a temporary basal for while I was at work to give myself less insulin because I was on my feet all day. It worked out for me there. So some of the negatives is that it's a lot easier to get um, lumps on your in your pump sites because it's one site for, this, for three straight days. Yeah, that's 72 hours of insulin going into one space which means there can be a buildup of insulin just bubbling sitting in a bubble under your skin and not really dispersing properly so make sure you rotate your sites in order to kind of avoid that build up and that lump it is attached to you constantly um so you're sleeping on hard plastic which is why if anyone's ever like had me sleep over at theirs or kind of been in my house you will see I slept with this guy um, while I was on the pump this guy is I called him a wee pump buddy um, he's a fabric a cushioned fabric wee plushy toy with a gap to slide your pump in and a wee gap to slide it onto your belt or like clip it to your waistline this was given to me free at a diabetic camp and I held on to it because it was cute and then I got a pump and I was like I have a use for it now so I would clip my pump into this at night time and clip it to my waistband like to the small of my back and would like turn it in so like this part was clipped to like the inside of my tortoise. um so that meant I wasn't sleeping on hard plastic because that's what a pump is. It's a hard plastic casing which can be uncomfortable. It is easier to tip into DKA because you're on one insulin and um, because you can kind of leave it alone and let's do its thing. It's a lot harder to realise that say your pump side has start, started leaking. Uh, or there's an error on your pump. It takes longer to do a set change than it does to inject your insulin. However, like it's once every three days, so it's not really a big thing, but it is a thing. So it kind of prevents against stacking your insulin, but it means that like, say if you've had dinner and then you decide to have a snack, but you haven't already dosed for it and you've put a, uh, your bolus to release over like a couple of hours or so, or even like if it, you've set it to go over half an hour you have to wait until that bolus has finished before you can input another one because it will cancel the bolus you have if you try and put input another one for like completely like aesthetic reasons it's really hard to find an outfit that doesn't show your pump but like a lot of people don't really care about that but it is a hard plastic thing that clothes with any fabric will like show a lump because that is your pump but in the grand scheme of things it is saving your life so you don't really care if it can be seen a lot of people wear it as a badge of honour 
Uh, tubing can catch on door handles a lot and rip out. There was once a time I ripped out like three um, sites in a row because it just kept getting caught on like my bed frame and my door handles and you're like my pancreas has just left the chat because you'll be walking and then you're like tubing will like catch and then it'll like rip out and like pull you back with it and then you're like just looking at your disconnected pump and realizing you have to change it all over again um you have to carry your set at least a spare site change with you everywhere because in case um of a pump failure or something or other like that um like i said there are some pump complications um, the battery could run out, you just change it to another lithium battery, your battery operated, congrats, you're like fairy lights. If the kind of cannula under your skin is bent or kinked under your skin, it prevents insulin delivery, which can lead to deep KA because you can't physically see anything wrong, but if in doubt, change your sight. So it beeps when it's done, like when you're done pressing any buttons. It beeps when it's done giving you your insulin, which is not great when you're doing backstage for a show and it's a very quiet show and it's a very emotional moment in the show and then suddenly beeps. If you disconnect your pump, you are without your insulin for a while and you can in fact forget to reattach your pump. I have done that in the past. I'd be like walking downstairs and I'm like, oh, my pancreas. I haven't reattached that yet. Um, within the pumps, there's also a variety called um, patch pumps or tubeless pumps. I think there's one called Omnipod. Um, it's a tubeless pump. It It is lightweight. It lasts 72 hours. Um, it's great for non-contact sports. It doesn't have any tubing, so it doesn't get caught anywhere. A negative on this is if the pod fails then you lose all of the insulin in it because I don't actually think there's a way to get the insulin out and it is controlled by a separate monitor um, for remote dosing so it's kind of like you pull it up on a different device and you have a handheld device to dose with. Uh, I'm going to link um, Diabetic Danica down there for more advice on that because she knows what she's talking about and I do not. So to sum up, that's kind of the general basics of what is insulin, pumps, injections, some of the pros and cons of each. I try to be fair and objective, but as I said before, I do have my own opinions on things. Um, but hopefully you can make the decision for yourself with the assistance of a healthcare team, because I am not liable for your decisions. And hopefully this helps a little. Uh, let me know if you want to see more like this in the comment box down below and remember that not every diabetic is the same we don't have the same regime a lot some of us may be on pumps some of us may be on injections but regardless of what our treatment plan is we're all a little different so thank you for watching and i will see you all next time bye